Hey what's going on guys, Core X Designs here and welcome to another 3D Studio Max tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about something that's, you know, uh, something that's out of the box and something that's not actually talked about when we talk about 3D Studio Max. And then that is called Clot Simulation. You know, so 3D Studio Max is probably the most powerful 3D software that you can get and, you know, stuff like this, such as liquid simulation and cloth simulation, these are stuff, you know, mass body simulation, these are stuff that actually makes 3D Studio Max uh, the most powerful 3D software out there, you know. So, uh, what we're trying to do today is, you know, simulate a cloth falling on an object. So, we, we're going to be simulating a cloth uh, that, simulating in the sense, you know, we make the cloth fall on something that's that's rigid. So, if you actually, if you actually, uh, you know, have a have a tablecloth if you you know when you of course have a tablecloth and you've actually you know try to uh, spread it on your table you see that the cloth actually deforms in a very organic kind of way and you'll be surprised to know that it is actually possible in 3D Studio Max to, to achieve that amount of realism and you know it really really looks cool so the first thing you do is go ahead and create a plane in let's say the top viewport and we just make it somewhat this large Okay, the size and the uh, the position doesn't really matter. So we have this plane here, and what we're trying to do is, you know, this, uh, if you have actually felt a cloth, uh, it's actually made of really small pieces. I'm not talking about molecules right now, but, you know, when it deforms, it deforms in a very organic kind of way. So right now, if you try to deform this plane, you only have like one, two, three restrictions. But if you have a lot of restrictions, and then you try to deform it, that will look a lot more organic. So what I mean by that is, if we increase the length segments to something like 100 and the width segments to something like 100, we see that we get a lot of small blocks constituting this actual plane. So what that does is basically give us more more segments to deform this cloth on. So you know now we have like 100 segments to deform this cloth on in the length and 100 in the width. So that way we can achieve a lot more organic results. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and move this up just a bit. Okay, so this is going to be our cloth. So let's go ahead and rename this to cloth. And now let's go ahead and create something that the cloth falls on. So I think I'm just going to create a box for the sake of this tutorial. And just make it this large. And, you know, just move it, move it, move it to the center. And we're going to rename this box to, let's say, table. So we're going to be assuming this uh, this box to be a table and the plane to be a cloth. And what we're and what we're trying to do is you know simulate the cloth falling on this table. Okay, so that is extremely simple and something that's not expected. So I'm just going to take this plane and apply a modifier called cloth. Okay, so 3D Studio Max is already you know starting to treat this uh, this uh, this. Uh, plane as a cloth but we need to change a few settings here so what we need to do is go ahead and click object properties here and we have our cloth which is actually the plane so we have three kinds of objects here which is inactive cloth and collision object what inactive means is it will not participate at all in the simulation and when we simulate it you know uh, 3D Studio Max will treat as if the object does not exist okay that is inactive um, cloth this is pretty self-explanatory um, you know, 3D Studio Max will treat uh, the object as a cloth. The third thing, which is collision object, is also pretty self-explanatory. Um, 3D Studio Max will treat it as an object that the cloth will fall onto. I mean, this uh, collision object will stay in its position. It will not move at all. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something like a table. It will not move, but the, but the cloth will fall onto the table. So for this cloth, of course, it, it's going to be a cloth, and we have a ton of presets here. So these are different kinds of, uh, of cloth materials that you can find in the world. Burlap, cashmere, wool, cotton, silk, and stuff. So we have presets set up, and, and you can see that if we change one of these presets, uh, we change the overall UV bend and all these crazy looking settings. I have no idea what some of them means. But, you know, people don't usually delve into this. So you can actually change the presets according to your needs. For example, if you're simulating a tablecloth, you, you're probably going to be needing cotton. Or if you're, if you're simulating silk, you will need silk. It, it actually depends on your choice and on your requirements. For now, I'm just going to uh, leave it to the blank or the, the default values, and that's going to pretty much suffice for us right now. Next thing we do is hit Add Objects, and we take our table and hit Add here. Okay. 
So if you guys uh, understood what I said in the last uh, last uh, five minutes or something, you're probably guessing that this table is not inactive but a collision object, and th and this is because the uh, table is actually something that the cloth will fall onto. So the table is a collision object, and the cloth is a cloth object, of course. So you can add more ob objects here, and you know make it collision inactive and all that stuff, and it ends pretty cool. So we're just gonna hit OK here. And that should be it. And yes, that is it. Next step here would be simply to hit simulate here and wait for this this box to pop up. And you can see that the uh, gravity is acting on this cloth here and it's falling on the table or the box. And in some time, you can you'll be able to see that uh, the cloth starts deforming itself. I just hit F4 to hide those lines here. Okay, so now you can see the cloth has started deforming, but uh, the uh, the box is visible as if it's tearing through the cloth. Uh, that's no that's no worries here. I just want to hit cancel here. And if you want to fix that, uh, what you need to do is go ahead and hit object properties here, and go to cloth and apply a preset here. So right now it is none. And let's say we add I don't know silk here. Okay, and let's go back to frame zero. As you can see, the uh, the cloth has uh, has actually had kind of like keyframes here. And you know if you go ahead and move back in the key in the uh, in the uh, this this portion here, it will actually move back. So we go ahead and go back to frame zero, and we hit erase simulation, and then we hit simulate again. So th this way we can restart the simulation at any time we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here, and I'll just resume it when the entire simulation has been done. Okay, so as you can see, the cloth simulation is done uh, pretty much. I just I just did it to frame 30 for just just to show you guys. So okay, so we have a couple of problems here, and that is the the table or the uh, box is actually peeking out of the uh, of the cloth as if the uh, cloth has been torn. And the reason this is happening is because you know cloth doesn't really treat sharp surfaces too well. So if you have a, like a really sharp surface such as this uh, this uh, this box here, the cloth simulation will have problems. But if you take this box and you know add turbo smooth or something to this. Um, let's say turbo smooth here. Okay, so you can move this uh, this cloth up. Okay, so we have this, and if you go ahead and create the iterations of like four, okay, and that becomes entirely round now. So if we take this cloth now, hit erase simulation, and then hit simulate again. Uh, I, I'm going to pause the video, of course, and then I'm just going to show you the uh, the change that we have here. So we hit simulate here. Okay, so again, I did not complete the entire simulation, but as you can see, the cloth looks a lot more uh, real now, and also we ha we don't have that uh, that you know s segmenting and the breaking of edges. One more thing that I forgot to tell you guys is you want to shift this turbo smooth before the cloth, no, of course. And the reason for that is if you move it above the cloth, the cloth modifier, the simulation will take place before, and the turbo smooth will take place afterwards, so that won't actually make a difference. <coughs> So that's why we need to put turbo smooth down and the cloth above. So as you can see, the amount of realism that we can achieve here, and look at the amount of organic stuff that we get here. This cloth looks really realistic, and if you go ahead and render this out, it won't look as beautiful right now because there are no materials applied, but you know, still looks really, really organic and cool. So this was exactly what I was talking about. What the hell is this? Okay, when I said that uh, the cloth is very organic. Okay. So this was the some of the basics of cloth, and what I'm going to do now is show you one of the projects that I did a while ago, and that's really going to make this really good. So I'm going to hit it open here, and I have a, I have an Iron Man helmet that I modeled some some while ago, and you know I struck this idea of a cloth revealing the uh, the helmet. So what that does is basically we have a cloth, and that reveals the helmet be, be, that is below it, and that looks really really cool. So as you can see, we have a cloth here, and we have the Iron Man helmet here. Sure looks cool. And what we do here is, if we go ahead and move forward, we see that the cloth actually falls in the helmet. And I've actually simulated this the entire entire length of the time. Of course, one more thing that I forgot to tell you guys is the number of frames that we have here. We have 100 frames here. So the cloth simulation will take place for 100 frames, as you can see, 101. 101 because frame number zero is a frame of course also so uh, if you if you want to simulate it for a longer amount of time something like three seconds or something more you need to have a larger number of frames on the on the 
on the track bar. The, the larger amount of frames we have, the larger or you know the farther the simulation will go. So as you can see, we can actually see some pretty decent details here. You can see that the this part here is actually this one here, and this actually looks really cool. And I kind of worked hard on this a little more. And I think we can go ahead and have a look at the properties here. So as you can see, I've not you know grouped up all the uh, Iron Man helmet parts into one. Uh, they are actually separate parts. So all of these are collision objects, as you can see. All of these are collision objects, except play number 002, which is the cloth. And I have the preset of silk, I guess. And that's, that's how much I remember. So as you can see, this actually looks cool. Now what you can do here with this is, you know, go ahead and render this out to 100 frames and then play it back in the opposite sense. So what we get here is a cloth that actually reveals our model and that actually looks pretty cool. It doesn't look that cool on smaller models, but if you actually have a car, this actually blows over your mind on how how realistic and how cool that car will look once it's unveiled by a cloth. So that was exactly what I wanted to show you guys this unveiling animation with a cloth. So I hope you guys found this tutorial useful and you know I'll be more than happy if you use this use this technique of cloths in more of your projects. Of course one more thing that, we, that I can say is if you want the cloth to look more realistic you need to increase the number of segments on this plane that we have here. I think I used 200 or 200 or something like 300 by 300 on this plane and on the previous one as you can see we have a lot more detail on this uh, on this cloth the, than we had on the previous one as you can see here and the reason for this is simply that we have a lot more a lot more segments here than the previous one so more detail is equal to more segments equal to a larger render time and of course a larger simulation time so yeah this is pretty much it for this tutorial I hope you guys found this useful if you did go ahead and hit the like button down below subscribe to my channel for newer upcoming videos also you can go ahead and give me suggestions on what my next video should be uh, in the comment section down below also if you guys actually use this technique to create some of your, some of your own projects you can always submit them as a video response down below or send me a personal message I always reply to that and I will sure go ahead and look at your project I'll be more than happy to look at it so thanks for watching everyone and um, yeah I hope you I hope you use this uh, this this kind of like a suppressed feature of 3D Studio Max in your in your upcoming projects. So thanks for watching everyone and have a nice day.